of Pennsylvania, and I think he wants to be a baseball commissioner. He wants to be something in sports. I hope he never leaves public life because he does a great job for us. Governor Ed Rendell. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Listen, we're going to keep this short because you don't need to talk here from the outgoing governor. You need to hear from the incoming governor. But I was asked by a, a blogger who was here today, what do you say to people who say, I'm not voting because I don't like the way things are going in Washington, don't like what President Obama is doing? What I say is, we always, first and foremost, should vote for what's good for our families. And there are two choices in this election. President Obama's not on the ballot, I'm not on the ballot. There are two choices in this election between two differing philosophies. Their philosophy, and you've heard it from Republican candidates for Congress and Senator all over the country, their philosophy is it's good to outsource jobs. Do you know, Joe Sestak's opponent said, we want to see a vibrant Chinese economy. Well, I have, I have news for Mr. Toomey. We want to see a vibrant U.S. economy. Republican candidates all across the length and breadth of this good country are talking about right to work, getting rid of prevailing wage. Haven't we had real wages of working Americans dumbed down enough? We need to keep wages high. We need to keep families able to buy stuff. We can't let this, we can't let this happen. The other vision is people who want to keep this economy strong. The best thing for this economy, and I know the building trades men and women here know it, and I've talked about it for two and a half years, the best thing for this economy is for us to build, to rebuild the American infrastructure, road, bridges, highways, water systems, etc. Put people to work in well-paying jobs that cannot be outsourced anywhere other than America. And put people back to work in factories. The USW is here, the United Steel Workers. We rebuild our infrastructure and steel goes through the roof and we hire more people in our factories. So the choice is clear. The choice is clear. Get out there and tell people, vote your pocketbooks, vote your future. Democrat, that's the choice. Now, I am pleased to introduce Dan Adorado because Dan and I have worked together for the last six years. He's been Allegheny County's chief executive He's done a great job. The unemployment rate in Allegheny County is lower than the national average and lower than the state average, and the state average is lower than the national average, and it didn't happen by accident. He's a hands-on governor. He knows what it is to create jobs. He knows how to work hard for working people. He's going to be a great governor. He's going to be a great governor. It's, there's only one thing wrong with that. There's only one thing wrong with him. He's a Steelers fan. Yeah. But, but, but we'll... Well, we'll forgive him for that because he roots for the Eagles in the NFC. So bring on the next governor of Pennsylvania, Dan Honorado! Thank you, Governor. You know, he waited, he waited eight years to do that to me because when he's in Pittsburgh, we never let him, we never let him down on his support of being talking about the, the, the Eagles out here. But I've got to tell you what, you know what he told me? He said, when you're in Philly, don't BS them. They know you live in Pittsburgh. Tell them who you support. They, they respect loyalty. So I appreciate the governor being here today. Listen, this race, you got four days. Joe Sessak and I are in the same position where we can win this race. It's about turnout. The polls all show it. Another poll came out today, just a few hours ago. Have both of us up with registered voters. But they have us down. But they have us down right now with likely voters because everybody's assuming no one's showing up. And I don't need to remind you what my opponent said yesterday. He actually said, we got to keep Philadelphia vote down. And went like this. That's how he wants to win. He expects that Philadelphia's going to fall asleep and not show up to vote. That's how he wants to get elected. We're not going to let that happen. You can't let that happen. I appreciate you being here today and about what you're going to do. Tom Corr and I are both from Pittsburgh. We're both from the West. That's the only thing we have in common. We actually live about eight miles from each other. We're very close to where we live. But his view of the world is different than my view of the world. I spent seven years running the second largest county in Pennsylvania. We were on our backs financially seven years ago. It was a mess. But we went to work. We reformed government. 
We figured out how to get jobs. We started investing in the old industrial sites. And today we have one of the lowest unemployment rates. We have two steel plants under construction in Allegheny County right now. We have, we have manufacturing plants to make mirrors for the solar industry and the green jobs. By the way, going to be represented by organized labor. We're going to make sure of that. And, and we did it working with our friends in labor so that we have jobs that pay a, a wage where you can raise a family on it. But here's the real issue here. You saw the debates. You saw what we stood for. I mean, when I say we're different, Tom Corbett, we were asked the question, how are we going to pay back $3 billion to the federal government for money we borrowed for unemployment compensation? You know what his answer was? He's going to increase the employee contribution. He's going to cut the unemployment compensation checks, but he's not touching the employer. That was his instinct because we were in front of the Chamber of Commerce. Ten days later, he changed his mind and said he had time to think about it because it was a different audience. He doesn't understand it. He thinks if you get an unemployment check, you don't want to look for jobs because the jobs are there. These are his words. That's, he, he's just out of it. He doesn't understand that people are hurting. We've got high unemployment. Well, I'm going to tell you something. As your governor, I'm going to focus all of my attention on getting Pennsylvanians back to work. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to make sure we have a competitive tax structure. We're going to make sure that our regulatory agencies are responding so companies want to be here. We're going to train our workers for the jobs of today and tomorrow. But before I leave here today, because I, I'm preaching to the choir, you, you, know, you know my political speech, but I, I want to point out one issue where we really differ, can have an impact on all of us right here. Anybody been following this debate on Marcellus Shale and natural gas yeah. in Pennsylvania? Yeah. Well, we, we probably couldn't have an issue that really shows where we stand and how different we are. My opponent, who's taken now a million dollars from the gas companies, is absolutely opposed to a severance tax and funding what we need to fund because uh, of the money he's taken. Now, every Republican governor and every Democratic governor has this severance tax. And when I'm governor, we're going to have it so we can fund the Department of Environmental Protection to watch the water and watch the environment. And we're going to make sure that we have money to do our roads, our water lines, and our sewer lines. But there's a bigger issue here, too. Penn State did a study. 80,000 new jobs in the next 18 months. Well, when I'm your governor, you're going to have my commitment. Before we give one permit, they're going to hire Pennsylvanians, not Louisiana, not Texas, not Oklahoma. Our people are getting those jobs. Tom Corbett and his crew, it's an all-out attack on prevailing wage. It's an all-out attack on the standard of living that you fought for for years. And I'm going to make sure that we never step backwards. There is no reason why we should have to try to balance this crisis on the backs of the working people of Pennsylvania and America. There's no way we should do that. And I want you to know one final thing. My opponent said that he's going to block and stop health care coverage and he won't take stimulus money. Well, I want you to know something. Not only will I accept and use stimulus money, when I'm governor, I'm going to ask President Obama for more stimulus money to invest in this country. Because you, want, you know why? You want to do the port in Philadelphia, I need a federal partner. You want to redo the interstates, we need a federal partner. You want to redo these old industrial sites that are scattered in southeastern Pennsylvania, we need a federal partner. We rebuilt Europe, we rebuilt Japan, we're now going to rebuild the United States of America. We're going to put money back in there, put people back to work. I'll end with this. Governor Rendell didn't say this, but four years ago, Governor Rendell and Senator Casey, you helped them go to a 20-point victory. We crushed four years ago. Joe Sestak and I, we know we're not winning by 20 points. But in four days, on November 3rd, when we wake up and you help us win by four points, they're going to call him senator and call me governor. We're going to turn the state around.